Right, today I'm gonna to help you with your tennis elbow. Now, whether that be an acute tennis elbow, like a epicondylitis, or a very chronic one, which has turned into a sort of epicondylosis, like a tendinopathy, regardless, you need to strengthen it. Now, if you've gone through this sort of acute phase where it's settled down a little bit, but it's still painful on a grip, you can't play a sport or you can't lift a pot because of the weakness, then you need to strengthen it. Now you've got to go careful. I'm going to give you three different options. The first option is to strengthen the actual tissue because that needs to be strengthened. If it's weakened in that extensor tendon and in the muscle group in your forearm, you need to strengthen it. Otherwise, it's going to keep being weak and being sore. Second thing is to give you options to use your arm and your elbow and strengthen everything else without irritating it. That's what we call open palm work. And then the third thing is to try and tackle perhaps maybe the cause, which is shoulder. So a lot of people who get tennis elbow problems, not that it's a referral, there's actual injury to the tennis elbow, or injury to the elbow, call it tennis elbow, is the problem is weakness in the shoulder. And then that might be a previous shoulder injury or previous shoulder stability or scapular issues that that person's had, which then overloads them in the forearm. So we'll go through the strengthening stuff first because that's the easiest stuff. What you do, what I do is direct extensor strengthening. Now, I would start off with eccentric with this, and then you went to concentric. Eccentric, and you've got to watch the load. So what I would do is go down to like, say, a bench or like this sofa, if you like. Put your, sort of rest your forearm on that sofa. What you're gonna do is grab your trusty TheraBand and wrap it around your wrist, okay? This part here, you don't have to step on it, this part here is controlled with the other hand. So if my sore arm is the left, and I'm using this for the right, what you try and do is sort of get down low enough that I can try and straighten my elbow. The straighter the elbow, the more effective you are gonna get with the extensive tendon part. If you bend your elbow, it's not gonna be as effective, so I would try and straighten your elbow. So you sort of gotta get down low. This might be easier if you're on a high bench, to be honest, but we're gonna show you on a sofa today. What you do is you do extension, so that movement, but on the way down, so eccentric, all right, to start with. So when you're a bit acute and it's a bit weak, you can't really load up and you know that hurts, so there's no point doing that. So what you wanna do is close your fist with that band, okay? Get down low, keep your elbow straight. Put some tension on that band like that downwards. So it feels like you got to, it's gonna pull your wrist down, okay? So hold it there. This is about the load. How much load is how strong you are, how, depending on the person's injury. You want no pain with this, just a little bit of load feeling. And then what you do, if you watch my fist, I'm slowly going into flexion. So I am doing eccentric extension. All right? And then we'll look at me. I take the load off and lift up. That's my rest period. So I can do active wrist extension without load eccentric wrist extension, which is going into flexion under load, all right, on the way down, that's my strengthening phase, release it, that's my rest phase. How many reps and sets? 12, 15, probably don't need to go to 20. If you can get to 20, you probably haven't got this tension high enough, all right? So 12, 15, that sort of thing, three or four sets of that, all right? daily work. You should have 24 hours recovery, you should be okay with that. That is directly targeting the little tendon in there. Now, that's just a sort of like, it's function of, I'm contracting the extensors to put some load on that tendon to try and strengthen it up. The major function, obviously, of wrist extension is to grip, okay? Remember, when you grip, and this is why you probably have pain when you grip, when you grip, you use your flexors, but your extensors counteract that grip. So if I gripped here, and didn't have any extensors, my wrist would do that. So my extensors pull my wrist to keep it neutral so I can punch, hold, that sort of thing. So many of you are wondering, like, why is my elbow feeling sore when I grip? That's the reason there. And you can see, when I grip, you can see that tendon working there like that. All right, so when I pull on my flexors, I have the opposite muscle group stabilizing my wrist so I can do things, all right? So this one is directly targeting the tendon, all right? What I said you to do is don't close your fist when you do other things, and we'll come to that in a minute. The second thing I want you to do is actually pronation and supination. I find this really effective, even though it's not direct extensor. The pronation and supination around the elbow helps stabilize, gets you a bit of strength in going, and it gives you sort of like a isometric loading for the extensors. Because hey, when you're injured and a bit sore, you can't do much with it, right? So the worst enemy is to rest it. You want to make sure you are doing something that something is gonna be boring, and it's got to be consistent, but that's the way it is. So 
When you're doing pronation simulation, what you want to do, if you look at where the band is, you want the band load on the top when you are going outwards. So you can see how it's on the bottom, that's the wrong way around. So when you're going this way, okay, when you're doing supination, I want the resistance on the top because then I'm getting, when I roll out, it's getting harder and harder and harder and harder and harder like that. Now what I would do to start with, if you notice I've got my open palm, I'll come to open palm in a minute, but I've got open palm. I'm not trying to grip this like this and grip as hard as I can because that's going to hurt me here. All right. Remember, I'm too weak. If I've got this epicondylosis, I'm too weak out here to grip. So I do ungrip. That's why I've got the band around my palm. And what I'm going to do is, that's not much load. You sort of work out how much load have I got there. A little bit. And you'll feel like that tendon, that muscle group is switched on. There's a nice symmetric load here, just keeping my fingers working like that. Then when I roll out, you'll feel there's a bit of work rate going on there. Okay, I'm actually using that in an isometric fashion. Even though I'm doing supination, I'm sort of using my bicep, using my supinator to do that movement, I'm doing some work here. Okay, so I'm getting some sort of isometric conditioning into that forearm, which is what I want. Plus, I'm also working on a few other areas of my elbow, and maybe they are the weak areas as well, which is contributing to why you're overloading that tennis elbow. Remember, tennis elbow is an RSI type injury, it's overload or a lack of recovery, a lack of rest. Not necessarily too much load, it's just not resting enough. So it's getting overloaded, all right? Maybe it's also getting overloaded because other muscle groups in your elbow and your shoulder are not good enough. So we work on a little bit of elbow stuff, and I'll show you the open palm, and we work on a bit of shoulder. So those are the two. You also do pronation, so just go around the other way. I'll show you this way. And so if you're in pronation, can you see if I have it under, that's not gonna work, all right? So you need to go the other way around, all right? And so it's over now. So when I do pronation that way, it's getting harder and harder and harder as I pronate. And then easy and easy and easy as I wind it back. Okay, again, open palm, work on that. Pretty simple stuff. Pronation, supination, loaded. It'll make a little bit of a difference. Now, that's to sort of start with what, as you recover and let that tendon sort of strengthen up, you've got to do other things. Okay, you've got to do bicycles, tricycles, you've got to do pushes and pulls. Every one of those items you do with an open palm to start with. As you get stronger, the rule is you close your palm as you get stronger, okay? As the weeks go on, you close your palm, and that's usually up to how much pain you get with a grip. So if I was going to do a row like this to say, and I might use a stronger band than this, but if I was gonna do row, normally I grab that, squeeze my fist, and pull in, okay? But that's gonna, if that hurts, then I need to open my palm. That's why I've got it wrapped around my wrist. So I'm still doing isometric work here, by keeping my fingers spayed like that, okay? I'm still working it. So what I do is work on rowing movement with my palm open. So I am doing some work at that lateral epicondylon and that tendon. The most of the work is done with all the back and the bicep, okay? So I'm working on my row mechanics, getting that correct, making sure my shoulder blade's pulling, that sort of thing, because again, is that a cause? Is, it, is your row mechanics bad? Are you? not very good at pulling back your shoulder, therefore you're gripping through your elbow and overloading that. So this is a chance for you to fix that by going, okay, open the palm, make it pain-free, make sure my shoulder goes back first, get that mechanic right, then pull through, then return and release. Not do this sort of thing, okay, which may be causing you a problem in the first place. So rowing is important. You can also do bicep curls. Now, you can't really do this with a weight because you know, you can, but it's a little bit hard. I'd stick to the band. Remember, you're doing low-level stuff. There's no point trying to do weights at this point. So instead of doing bicep curls with a closed fist, you need to open palm it. Again, this is why it's easy to have a band like that because it's not going to fall off. It's down on my leg, so there's the tension. The more shorter I have, the harder it's going to be. So just watch how much tension you put on that band. And what you can work on is your bicep curls, okay? As long as that doesn't hurt, okay, in there, when you do that, that's fine. Now we talked about progressions. How I'd progress that is one, go heavier on the band so it's harder to pull up. But also, what you can do is slowly close your grip, maybe by half. Because remember, we talked about before, if I close my grip and use my flexors, I have to use my extensors more during that movement to counteract the flexors to keep my wrist straight. Otherwise, my wrist is gonna do that. So it happens naturally. Every time I close my fist, I will use more extensors. So think, graduate that. Maybe by week two, you know, you're closing your wrist a little bit, depending on the pain, 
and then you get closer and closer and closer, and then you start fully closing it when you do a bicep curl. And obviously, then the heavier the load, the more you grip, the more you use that. And we talk about you know, why is this happening. Sometimes it's you know shoulder. Sometimes it's because they're gripping too much. Okay, they're gripping too much to make up for the fact that they maybe is it playing tennis, is it pulling something because they're lacking strength somewhere else. So just watch your grip on that. So you can do triceps exactly the same, pull down. So if this was say above like this, again you can put it through your hand, have your palm open and do tricep work that way. So there's lots of things you can do with tennis elbow. You can do presses. So if I'm here, okay, you can do scapular work that way. That won't affect that tennis elbow. And again, that's going to sort out maybe some serratus work, some winging problems that you might have through the shoulder that's causing this to overload as well. Now, once you've done that sort of open palm stuff, which you can graduate, okay, then you want to start working on fixing maybe that shoulder. A lot of people that come through here with tennis elbow, we look at their shot, they might have come here for a shoulder injury six months prior, a year prior, go, okay, you haven't got that sorted yet, this is why it's good. Well, they thought they had it sorted, but they're still overloading, they've gone and done something else on it. So, those sort of people we need to work on shoulder work, stability, and strength, okay? Because otherwise you just rest it, let it strengthen up, but then you go and do it again. So, external rotation is your friend. Work on, you got tennis elbow, work on external rotation. And, you know, start off down here, and again, you can do an open palm grip, okay? So you can do it that way, okay, without even closing your palm. So you can use your band, do your external rotation work here. If your external rotation is weak, just start off down here. Get the stability right first, okay? Then you'd go higher up. Now, as you go higher up, you just gotta make sure that you don't part, close your palm. It's gonna be harder to do that in the forearm because I have to really work on my fingers here than it is to do this, okay? So the higher up you go, the more work you're gonna do in your elbow. So just be careful of the pain. But external rotation work is key. The other thing I want you to work on is stability of the actual shoulder joint. So you can start off with just doing a single arm press. So into full point, one arm away, and work on retraction, protraction. Now you can see with this, this isn't really doing much, right? So I'm nice and safe through my elbow, and I'm focusing on trying to keep my body over my hand and work on serratus work to help stabilize the scapula, okay? And if you think, if I can start at least with scapular presses, some row, some bicycles, some tricycles, some external rotation, I've got a lot of things going on in the arm that's not irritating my elbow, okay? Which is actually building on, strengthening, and stopping that deconditioning from not being able to do anything because you've got a painful arm, and try to build at least some sort of rehab into my process for my elbow. Then that gets harder, okay? So you can expand the scapular work, you can expand the row work, you can expand all the strengthening around the shoulder as this gets better. So you can put more load to it, and then of course, you can st start gripping things and doing normal weights as you get better. The other thing in the gym, if you find that you know, you're going to the gym and you want to do machines, just keep that palm open. So if you're thinking about doing chest press or shoulder press, use a machine and don't grip it, okay? So choose a machine that you can keep open palm. You'd be quite surprised what you can do with your tennis elbow, and it is much better to do strengthening work that's pain-free than completely rest it. Remember, you're resting the injury site, you're resting it from getting overloaded, but at the same time, you've got to work on other things while you're resting, and then eventually strengthen that whole thing up. So there's my little take on helping you out with some tennis elbow. Hopefully, if you can do those sort of things to start with, that'll get you on the right track to getting it perfect. See you next time.